hi it's hope and welcome to the video this is going to be my september tbr now normally i would do a jenga tbr but for september here i am not because this is the month for bookoplathon which is a i'm trying to figure out how to describe it um essentially this is ho a readathon hosted by becca from becca and the books and Bookopolathon, essentially you have a Monopoly board, but it's Bookopoly. And I went ahead and I created this one. All the prompts are based on the one that Becca created. I will leave the announcement video um, in the description to kind of explain everything. But essentially is you, you, roll the, you roll two dice and then you move around the board. You start at go, which is right here, and then you go around. And for each, like, space you land on, there's a prompt, and then you fill the prompt. Simple as that. Then there is also, um, the, ma the Magical Readathon, or really, um, the Novice pa Path. I, um, I struggled with that. Um, which is a mm, readathon hosted by G from Book Roast. I will also leave that announcement video, um, in the description. And essentially, it is a readathon that essentially, it's almost like... Um, if you know what the owls and the newts were, it's hosted by the same person, but it's essentially, instead of it being Harry Potter related, like the owls and the newts were, it is an entirely new magical school, and we are on the journey to it. Um, so in a minute here, you will see the rolls, which I pre-filmed like five, four or five days ago, and I just now have the time to film this, as well as the magical readathon prompts and what I'm reading for those, as well as seasonathon prompts and what I'm reading for them. Um, seasonathon is well, it's seasonathon fall into reading. Um, it's essentially a fall-based readathon that happens the week of that it turns fall, which is September 22nd, is when fall starts in like the northern hemisphere, and it runs from the 20th to the 26th. I think I have the notes on my phone somewhere about it all um, and so there's prompts for that I'll mention those at the end because there's only I think three books I'm reading for that um, and so all of these books kind of coincide with each other I was like if I can get a book that fits all three readathons I get a book that fits all three readathons and multiple of the I think there's only one book that two books that only fit one readathon so how this will go is I will play the clip of me rolling, um, which I filmed that on my phone. It's kind of shaky, but it's the best I got. Um, so I'll play that clip, and then I will talk about the prompt, and then what book I picked for the prompt. Um, and I will be explaining the prompts in my own words, because I don't have the prompt thing open. Like, I just have a note on my phone of, like, here's what I'm reading for everything. So let's just start off with roll number one. I actually should mention I did six rolls um, and yeah so it's six rolls go around the board all of that so here is the board right here I'm using my phone just so that it's like easier for me to like zoom in on whatever side so like that's the shadow you're seeing right there I I've already kind of explained this in the intro on how this is going to work but so let's just get started I am starting here on go and let's just start i'm a little nervous but let's just go so i have these they're technically yahtzee dice from a yahtzee game but let's just go okay nine one two three four five six seven eight nine okay monsters so for monsters this one i was debating on multiple books and I settled on Her Soul to Take by Harley Leroux which is a new adult um kind of paranormal story and it fits the monsters prompt because one of our main characters is a demon and that classifies as a monster essentially I don't know much about this but essentially we have a girl named Ray who is a I think it's like a she's like a ghost investigator type thing and when she's trying to find a ghost she finds this demon named, demon named Leon, and it is a dark, dark book. Um, check out trigger warnings and all of that. That is pretty much all I know 
and I read The Dare by Harley Leroux in May, was it? Really liked it and I'm really excited to kind of read more from this author and I've heard only good things about this book on various different platforms. Rule number two, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. History. Rule number two led me to history and this one was really hard. I do not read that many books that, that I can think of um, that kind of are set in history. Um, but for this I'm picking Gods and Monsters by Shelby Mahirin, which is the third and final book in the Serpent and Dove trilogy. Um, the first book being Serpent and Dove, um, which essentially we follow Lou, who's a witch, and Reed, who's a witch hunter, and they are forced into a arranged marriage. Not arranged marriage, but more of like they have to marry for reasons, and it is enemies to lovers and all of that, and um, I'm really excited to be reading this because it's been like um, I've been wanting to read it so badly. I have a physical copy requested from my library, but if that does not show up, I will just purchase the ebook. Um, if that, like, if my library doesn't get it before the end of the month because I've requested it and it might take a while. Um, and how this fits the history prompt is it is based in, um, like, the country is kind of based in historical France, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I don't know what century, maybe like 16th century France or something like that. So that's how it kind of fits into the history prompt because history was essentially like any book that takes place in history is based in history or anything like that. Rule number three, so far no doubles and I'm very happy about that. Seven again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Opalent. Rule number three led me to Opalent, which I was really struggling with this. Essentially Opalent was like the prompt was very vague, but it was like something to do with royalty or like wealth and all of that. And so I'm picking a Dance with the Fae Prince by Elise Kova. And this is the kind of second book in the Married to Magic series. Essentially, it is a series of standalones that are in this one world. Um, and so essentially, A Dance with the Fae Prince, I actually don't know that much about. All I know is it is a girl named Katria who ends up in an arranged marriage and little does she know when she accepts the arranged marriage that it is the um, Fae Prince and that's pretty much all I know. This just came out like a week ago I think, a little over a week ago when I'm filming this. Um, just came out August 19th, is that the day? Yeah, so like a week ago. Um, and I'm really excited for this because I read A Deal with the Elf King in July and I really liked it and I'm really excited to read more by Elise Kova and yeah. Rule number four, three, one, two, three. Ooh, steal a book. So for steal a book, essentially steal a book means you have to pick a book that is on somebody else's TBR and read it for your own. And there was so many good book choices, but I was like, I want it to either be a book that I own or a book that I've been wanting to read or that is like actively on my want to read list type thing. Um, and so somebody had on their TBR Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. I think they had the the hardcover, like the other cover of it, but it's still the same book. Um, and I cannot remember who it was. It was somebody in the Discord server for Bookopolathon. Um, so I do not know their name. I'm so sorry. I should have probably looked that up. Um, but yeah, I'm going to just read the back because I don't really know much about this. Um, but it, So, I'm just going to read the back. Defiance is survival. Spence's world has been under attack for decades. Now pilots are heroes of what's left of the human race, and becoming one has always been Spence's dream. But her fate is intertwined with that of her father's, a pilot himself who was killed years ago when he abruptly deserted his team, leaving Spence's chance of attending flight school at slim to none. No one will let Spenza forget what her father did, yet fate works in mysterious ways. And an accidental destiny and an accidental discovery in a long forgotten cavern might just provide her with a way to claim a way to claim the stars. And I've heard only good things about this. Um, and yeah, I'm really excited to pick this up because it has been on my like wanting to read for a while and originally I didn't really want to start that many series 
but I kind of then said screw it because I'm like, I actually do really want to read this, especially because the third book, Cytonic, comes out in, is it November? October or November, like, soon here, so might as well pick up the series now. And is this, and roll number five, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, community shelf, ooh, so my community shelves are here. I've already shuffled these, so let's go with a library book. So a book that I will borrow from my library, either ebook or a physical book or an audiobook. So for rule number five, I got community chest, which I put in six was it five or six no, it was five prompts, and the prompt that I got is library book because I've been really wanting to try to read more library books recently. Um, and so for this, I'm picking Perfect on Paper by Sophie Gonzalez because I'm able to get a um, ebook copy through my library through Libby. And essentially, all I really know about Perfect on Paper is that we follow um, Darcy, who runs this kind of anonymous dating thing where it's like, if you're having dating problems, you kind of go to her for help but it's anonymous you don't like she doesn't know the person that asked for advice doesn't know it's her and she doesn't really know who that person is but when a boy um asks for her help on trying to get his ex back she agrees and then he ends up finding out who she is and she has to help him um or else he'll reveal who like who she is like that she's the anonymous person and all of that, um, I've heard only great things. This book came out in May, was it? Is that when it came out? No, March. It came out March of this year, and I've only heard great things about this. Um, and yeah, I'm very excited to pick this up. I've been wanting to pick up a Sophie Gonzalez book for a while. I actually have one of her books on my TBR for August, but I highly doubt it's going to be read by then. Um, but I'm just very excited for this and able to get a ebook copy through my library, which I'm so excited about. And the final roll, because I'm doing six rolls, unless this is a double. Eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Lowest rated. For lowest rated, I wanted to pick the lowest rated physical book on my TBR because I need to get my physical book down because I have like 20 unread books, which for a lot of people, 20 is not a lot, but for me, that is a lot. So I did, I picked the lowest rated physical book that I have and that gave me Wicked Like a Wildfire by Lana Popovic. And I haven't really heard anybody talk about this. Um, I got this like over a year ago from Book Outlet. So I'm just going to read the back because I've honestly forgotten what this book is about. All the women in Iris and Melina's family have the unique magical ability or gleam to manipulate beauty. Iris sees flowers as fract fractals and turns her kaleidoscope visions into glasswork, while Melina in interprets moods and as music. But their mother has forbidden Iris and Melina to share their magic with anyone, and above all, to fall in love. But when their mother is attacked and left hovering between life and death, the sisters unearth an ancient curse that binds their fates and their hearts to a force larger than life. To save each other, they must untangle a thousand years of lies and secrets. That sounds pretty good. I actually forgot what this was about, and now I'm like, okay, but like that actually sounds kind of good. So I'm picking that for lowest rated. Um, I might also pick up this sequel because I own that wherever it is. Um, there's like a firestorm. I might also pick that up um, in like I might read it in September if I do really enjoy this one and I don't read other books on my TBR. Like I don't know. So those were the prompts for Bogopolathon. Bogoblathon did me pretty well, I I think. Like, I do really enjoy those. I'm really excited to read all of those books, pretty much. So now let's go into Magical read like the Magical Readathon prompts and all of that. And I'll go through the prompt and then what book. And if it's a book I've already explained, I won't explain it. But if it's a book that I haven't explained, well, I'll explain it. If that makes any sense. So, The Novice Path Entrance. Read a book with a map. I am going to be reading... Skyward because it has, let me find the map, it has like um, a like cavern map and like a base map if you can see that. I don't know if we're in frame because I can't see but it has maps so I'm using that. 
for Ash for Ash Torn Tree, a book that keeps tempting you or on top of your TBR, Gods and Monsters by Shelby Meheran. I've been dying to read this since I read Blood and Honey last September? Is that when Blood and Honey came out? Whenever Blood and Honey came out, I've been dying to read like the next book in that series since then because, well, the ending of Blood and Honey broke me and I'm scared to read Gods and Monsters, but I've also heard great things. Like, it's really good. I've also heard that the ending broke some people. So, like, that's tempting me. That's, that's like, making me want to read it to prove is it actually, like, gonna, gonna make me cry. And, like, I don't know. Um, for The Mist of Solitude, Read a Standalone, Perfect on Paper by Sophie Gonzalez is a standalone. Um, Ruin of the Sky, read a book featuring ghosts slash haunted house or other supernatural elements. Her Show at the Take by Harley LaRoe, it features a ghost hunter and a demon. That's kind of ghost, haunted house, supernatural things. For Obsidian Falls, read a, read a thriller or a mystery book. I'm going to be reading The Things She's Seen by, please correct me if I'm saying these names wrong, Ambelin and Ezekiel... Quamelin? I know I'm pronouncing at least some of that wrong. Please correct me how to actually properly pronounce the the book, but I need to look up on Goodreads what this this um, book actually is about because it is the group book for the Avengers Initiative Reading Challenge, which is essentially a um, kind of Marvel-based readathon that takes place the entire month, the entire year of 2021. And each month there's a group book, and essentially the group book, you just get, like, extra abilities for reading the book, essentially. Sorry if the camera angle changed at all. My mom needed me for something, so I had to, like, stop filming. So for the things she's seen, I'm just going to read the Goodreads description because I don't really know much about this. Nothing's been the same for Beth Teller since the day she died. Her dad is drowning in grief. He's also the only one who is able to see her and hear her since the accident. But now she's got a mystery to solve. A mystery that will hopefully remind her detective father that he is still alive and there is a life after Beth. And that there is a life after Beth that is still worth let it, let, living. Who is Isabel catching and why is she able to see Beth too? What is her connection to the crimes Beth father has been sent to investigate a gruesome fire at a home for troubled youth that has left an unidentified viable body behind. What happened to the people who haven't been seen since the day of the fire? As Beth and her father unravel the mystery, they find a shocking and heartbreaking story lurking beneath the surface of a small town and a friendship that lasts beyond one life and into another. So it's essentially like a, a girl dies and her father can still see her and they end up trying to solve a mystery? That, that actually does sound kind of interesting, to be honest. So that's what I'm reading for thriller or mystery because it's kind of like a mystery-ish. Tower of Rumination, read a five-star prediction. For this, I'm reading The Well of Ascension by Brandon Sanderson. This is a five-star prediction. It's in my five-star predictions uh, book video, which I'll leave, hopefully if I remember, in the description, in the iCard and in the description. Um, but essentially, The Well of Ascension is the second book in the M Mistborn series, the first book being The Final Empire, where... I always struggle to describe this book, but essentially we have these people called Alamancers who can wield a metal and there's different abilities for each metals. And then we also have Mistborn who are people that can wield all, I think it's 12 metals that people can wield. And Mistborns have all of these different abilities. And we have Keltsier who um, is trying to avenge, I think it's like avenge the death of his wife by killing the, the high, like the, like the kill, by trying to kill, I cannot remember what it's called, like the evil, like the, the dark one, the evil one, the something like that. Um, and he recruits a kind of street, a street rat named Vin to help him because he believes that she is a misborn and it's revealed that she is. And I gave The Final Empire a five stars. I read it in May and absolutely loved it. So I really hope I love The Well of Ascension just as much. I've heard that just as the series goes on, the books get better and better. And then we have Aurelium Academy Arc, a book with a school setting. I, I'm guessing on this one. And that is Unraveled by Angelina J. Steffart. 
This is the second book in the Breath of Fate series. Is that what it's called? I think that's what it's called. Um, and essentially, in the first book, we have... What is our main character's name? I can't remember. So, in the first book in this series, Torrent, we have Lanny Dawson, who... Um, finds out that she is what is called a Lightbringer, and the Lightbringer is essentially somebody that kind of transfers the soul of a dead person to heaven, and then there's also um, Shadowbringers that drag the souls to hell, and she has to kind of learn about this new ability with the help of her best friend who is also a Lightbringer, and all of that. That is kind of the rough gist of it and I read the first book in May was that when I read it April or May really liked it and I'm really excited for um, Unraveled and why I say I think this takes place in a high school is because the characters are high school age there they go to high school in the first book so I'm assuming that just continues on if not I will pick a different book for this um, there's a few other books that I could easily read so like it's not that hard but that's just the one that I really want to read because the third book Unforgiven I think that's the title of the third book comes out I think the end of September I think it's September 30th so I'd like to be able to read that one when it comes out but yeah so those are all of the magical readathon prompts now on to the fall into reading um with this is you can double up triple up whatever up um, unlike the other ones where it was like, per prompt, you pick a book. Um, so, yeah, this takes place from September 20th to the 26th. So, the challenges, there are six challenges. One, school's in session, read the group book or buddy read a book. The group book is Perfect on Paper by Sophie Gonzalez, so I'm reading that. Um, online learning, read an ebook or listen to an audiobook. Any ebook really, but I have written down perfect on paper because you can double up type thing. Um, Friday Night Lights, read a book involving a competition, example, a contest, sport, games, or tournament. I have requested from my library, um, Check Please, Volume volume 1 slash Book 1 by Ngozi Ukazu. Don't know if I'm pronouncing that name correctly. Um, I looked up how to pronounce the, the name, but it only gave me the first name. Um... But that is essentially, um, it's essentially a, I don't know much about it, but essentially it is a, like, ex-figure skater who joins a hockey team and then ends up falling for the captain. And it's, like, a queer, um, I think maybe college age graphic novel? I th think it's college age. Um, I've heard great things about this and my library, um has it like my library doesn't have it but my library system of like there's like I think it's like 20 different cities within my like province have they're all linked up and you can like request books from any of them and they'll just ship them and so they had it at one of them so I just need to like wait for it hopefully it'll come in um September if not I won't do this prompt or I'll find a different book to use this prompt like to use for this prompt but that's what I'm kind of saying for now that's one that I literally added about an hour before filming. I was like, I want a graphic novel. Let's chuck that one on because it fits. Uh, for Who Wants Candy Corn, read a book with white, orange, and or yellow on the cover. I'm also going to go with purple on paper because it has all of those covers, I believe. Um, for Pumpkin Spice Lattes and Apple Picking, read a book with a fruit or beverage on the cover or in the title. I'm not gonna do this. I couldn't find a book and also that prompt and really just like I don't really have any books that fit it. And then for the final prompt, Beneath the Harvest Moon, channel inner beast and read something paranormal. I'm going to be reading Unraveled by Angelina J. Stefford because it has like essentially like not not quite angels and demons but it has like kind of like that because they're kind of like angels and demons actually I think no scratch that the there is one character I think is a demon I think he's a demon yeah if I remember correctly he's a demon so that's paranormal right angels and demons those are paranormal things so that's I think every book I'm reading this um in September there's a few other books that I'd like to read I'd like to get to um 
as well, I'd like to read Steel Tide by Natalie C. Parker. That was one that I'm not putting on my TBR, but I guess technically you could almost count this for um, read a book with fruit or beverage on the cover because water is a beverage. You could stretch that. Um, and then I'd also love to maybe read The Love That's Put the World by Emily Henry, but I'm not putting all those on my TBR just in case I don't get to them. But those are like two other books that I'd love to get to because they've been kind of sitting on my TBR for a little while. So yeah. Um, but I really hope you enjoyed this video. It is probably super long and I've probably rambled for way too long. I have no idea how long this raw footage is. Um, but I really hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what your TBR for uh, the month of September is and if you're participating in any of these readathons, what books you're reading for each prompt. Again, I will leave all the readathons in the description below and I, yeah, I think that's everything. So, bye!